Good morning. Good morning. That was your wake up call. <laughs> you can be on edge for the next time it's going to happen. So, welcome to Hope Lutheran Church. Welcome into the presence of the Lord this morning. Welcome into the fellowship of this congregation so that together we can live in God's grace and follow and serve Him in the manner of our Savior Jesus Christ. We have various things going on this week that you can check out in the green sheet if you got one of these bulletins. We will have Bible classes and Sunday school this morning. Our new mission project has begun for Sunday school. After that, they will have a drive-by birthday celebration for Leroy Schilling. So if you'd like to take part, talk to Deacon Sharon about that this Friday is moving in on the trail. So that's from 7.30 to 9.30, Frozen 2, your opportunity. Come and be part of that. If you'd like to help out with it, you can talk to Carl about where you can fill in. And again, if you have an RSVP for the 60th anniversary celebration, which is just in two weeks now, be sure to sign up on the sheet at the Welcome Center. Other announcements? Yeah. So, uh, Pastor mentioned the new project, Austin Disaster Relief Network. We've collected $203 so far. Uh, we'll have a guest with us uh, one of these upcoming weeks to tell us more about what they do. Uh, but they're involved in so many different things uh, regarding disasters for the Austin and general Texas area. Uh, hurricane relief and then just flooding and all kinds of other emergencies and so we'll find out more about how we can participate in that as time goes on so uh, we're counting on your uh, dedicated support like we have had from you from all our other previous projects so thank you for supporting those and we look forward to our commitment to this one as well and second of all their choir and bell choir will be rehearsing getting ready for the 60th anniversary service. And our rehearsal will be tomorrow starting at six. So if you haven't made that leap of faith to contribute your whatever you've got, um, we're happy to use that and uh, come tomorrow at six. And uh, you can be a part of that celebration as well. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Anything else? We'll share the peace of Christ with each other. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Praise and petitions. Don? Ask God to go with Rocky into surgery this Thursday, perhaps. And pray the Lord for success and John. Pray for the family of Marty Ammon, Betty's stepmom who passed away last week. Betty's stepmother died last Sunday. The funeral was yesterday, so we commend Margie's family to the Lord that they would be kept in his comfort, hope in Christ. Alex. Nephew Kevin is still in an induced coma. Pray the Lord to work out his perfect will in his life. Joe Ellen. I have to I have thank I thank God the jury's home already tomorrow Wednesday evening. Thanking God that Perry has now returned from the hospital. Pray for full recovery for him and also giving thanks that band service is beginning this week. Sharon. A friend of our family that has died of the coronavirus. Who's family? Oh, a friend of the family whose <coughs> loved one died of coronavirus. Pray the Lord. Keep them in his loving care. Give them strength for tomorrow. Ginger. Yes, uh, prayer for the 
from Angola. Merciful Lord, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving to you. And I will call on the Lord's name. What can I give back to the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will call on the Lord's name. The death of the Lord's faithful. Is a costly loss in his eyes. Oh yes, Lord, I am definitely your servant. I am your servant and the son of your female servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sisters, I want you to know that the things that, we, that have happened to me have actually advanced the gospel. The whole Praetorian Guard and everyone else knows that I am in prison for Christ. Most of the brothers and sisters have had more confidence through the Lord to speak the word boldly and bravely because of my jail time. I am glad because I know that this will result in my release 
through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It is my expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything. Rather, I hope with daring courage that Christ's greatness will be seen in my body, now as always, whether I live or die. Because for me, living serves Christ, and dying is even better. If I continue to live in this world, I get results from my work. But I do not know what I prefer. I am torn between the two because I want to live, I want to leave this life and be with Christ, which is far better. However, it is more important for me to stay in this world for your sake. I'm sure of this. I will stay alive and remain with all of you to help your progress and the joy of your faith and to increase your pride in Christ Jesus through my presence when I visit you again. Most important, live together in a manner worthy of Christ's gospel. Do this whether I come and see you or I'm absent and hear about you. Do this so that you stand firm, united in one spirit and mind, as you struggle together to remain faithful to the gospel. That way you will not be afraid of anything your enemies do. Your faithfulness and courage are a sign of their coming, destruction, and your salvation, which is from God. God has generously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but also of suffering for Christ's sake. You are having the same struggle that you saw in my face, and now hear that I am still facing. This is the word of the Lord. Again around noon, and then at three in the afternoon, he did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, he went and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you just standing around here doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. He responded, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the workers and give them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and moving on finally to the first. When those who were hired at five in the afternoon came, each one received a denarii. Now, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarii. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked one hour, and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had to work the whole day in the hot sun. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you a denarian? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give this one who was hired last the same as I give to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I am generous? So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. 
We confess the Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We sing the next hymn. ourselves as generous. That's a good self-image to have and a good public image to promote. No one wants to be labeled a cheapskate or a tightwad. So if someone comes up to you and asks for ten dollars and you've got a wad of bills in your pocket because you just cashed your COVID relief check, <laughs> you probably hand a 10 spot over, no questions asked. You can afford it. But let's say you're headed to lunch with that $10 bill, and it's all you have. It's that or go hungry. You're not going to part with it so that someone else can eat. And there, the true nature of your generosity is revealed. How much money are you willing to give away to someone in need? How much time are you willing to devote to benefit someone else's life? How much love can you share 
before you start to worry that you'll run out. Envy has a regular place in our lives, too. When I'm on the tennis court and see another player zipping around to the ball, I wish I had such quickness. I'd win so many more games if I could run like that. You look around and say, how can they afford to go on that vacation? And I can't. It's not even necessarily things. Oh, I'd be so much happier if that woman were my wife. Or just the general. Why hasn't my life turned out better? Everyone else gets the good stuff. Usually we conclude with a childish lament, it's not fair. Then we come to this parable Jesus told where all the workers got the same pay even though some of them worked far less. It goes against all our ideas of what is right and proper, how the world should work. One of the first rules of economics is that people get what's coming to them. If you've worked longer, harder, and more faithfully than others, you get more. Our system is based on it. The more you do, the more you get. If not cash at the end of the day, then the influence and power and status. Even in the church where we talk about living by grace alone, we still like to think that we'll be rewarded based on what we give. We're regular in coming to church. We attend meetings. We give ample offerings. We do our share. We bear the heat of the day. That should count for something. If not now, then at the end of days when the owner returns. If you've done more than others, the blessing should be bigger, right? But hear what he says. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? That can be a terrifying thought. God does what he wants with what is his. And it all belongs to him. The Lord has a comprehensive claim of ownership. There is nothing outside of his purview. Anything we can see, touch, or use had its origin in the creative work of God. As the scriptures testify, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. God says, every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. As we heard again just last Sunday, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father gets even more specific in Exodus 19. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We are his possession. And he allots according to his wisdom. It turns out all our striving is for nothing. That can be hard to accept. Your labor to get more than others counts for nothing. Your claims of superiority do not hold up. Your presumptions of greater worth are exposed as pretentious. Now, it's true that some workers labor 
from dawn to dusk. Many of us have been Christians since the infant baptism, attended Sunday school, joined youth group, went on to become teachers and board members and faithful givers. You can confirm that you've been regular in church your whole life. So some have been at hope for 60 years, and others have come in just the last couple of years. We don't mind when the owner goes and hires others later in the day. It's great to look around and see people who've joined us through instruction, who come because of personal invitation, people meeting Jesus here, liking what they've experienced, and staying around. We even give thanks to God for the deathbed conversions we hear about. But then, look at what the owner does. He gives the last as much as he gives the first. So a last-minute convert can scrape by and get into heaven for the exact same reward? And what about those at church who don't pull their weight and offer as much support? They shouldn't get to enjoy the same fruit as those who really work. But did you notice in the parable, the only reason that some came last and others came first is that the master chose to call them in that order. It wasn't by your own doing, and it is certainly not dependent on your own goodness. Are you resentful because I am generous? None of us should forget this fact. God does not treat us as we deserve. Which is the very definition of mercy. God does not treat us as we deserve. Even our best work is soiled with sin. None of it measures up to the standard of holiness. My heart hasn't always been pure, even as I've been laboring all my life. I've been proud of myself, resented others, fostered unjust discrimination, jumped to false judgments. The wages of sin is death. This is the payment we really deserve if things were truly fair. Yet God is generous. And his ways are not our ways. He will freely pardon, as Isaiah proclaims. He is generous with forgiveness. He washes you with hyssop and makes you white as snow. And in Christ, God shows his total generosity. There's Jesus' abundant feeding of food in the miracles that he performed, the lavish grace shown to the prodigal son, the free forgiveness offered to the, those who actually crucified him, the promise of paradise for the repentant thief. Jesus is generosity incarnate, the living example of the ultimate gift giver. He gives of himself without hesitation or deceit. Jesus doesn't restrict or limit his loving kindness. He doesn't measure it out on the basis of who is worthy and who earned it. He just extends it. He lets it overflow. He's willing to shower everyone in the abundance of his new life.
in Christ, God does what he wants with what is his. And we are continually blessed by it. In baptism, he pours out his generous forgiveness upon us and puts his claim on us. In his word, he speaks his abundant forgiveness upon our sins and leads us into faithful discipleship. In his supper, he feeds us with his body and blood generously and freely given and strengthens us for joyful witness. In these terms, we all get the same. And isn't it marvelous? So we choose to move beyond the envious eye. Instead, we rejoice in the kindness of the Lord. We revel in it. We recount the goodness of God who doesn't play favorites, who calls, gathers, sanctifies, and enlightens all of us. Rather than begrudging, how the Lord treats others, even those who come late. We live joyful, thankful that we benefit from his generosity for the rest of our days. Peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord and offer to him the petitions and supplications of a people confident of his promise to hear and answer us with mercy. That we may seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him in the day of salvation, and be prepared by his mercy for the day of judgment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may delight in the light of Christ and his salvation, and that sinners may find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may hear the voice of God speaking in his word and be nurtured by faithful pastors who preach and teach this gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that this word may be the foundation of the home, that husband and wife may be united in this faith and hope, and that their children may hear and be nurtured in this word by faithful parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may enjoy the blessing of good government, faithful leaders, peace in our land, and peace among the nations, and that we, we may be good citizens and neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the sick may be healed, the trouble no peace, the grieving be comforted, and the dying be delivered to everlasting life in Christ, and especially for Ruby's daughter, Cynthia Parker, as she undergoes cancer treatment that we all may be delivered from fear and anxiety and despair by God's gracious care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may commune in faith, that no unrepentant sin may hinder our reception of Christ's body and blood, and that the fruits of this communion may be reflected in a manner of life in keeping with who we are as God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may honor the Lord with praise and thanksgiving and bring to the Lord the tithes and offerings of a grateful people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may not forget the witness of the faithful who lived and died in Christ. That we may at last be joined with them in the marriage supper of the Lamb, his kingdom without end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, and grant to us all things good and wholesome, and keep from us all things harmful. Give us contentment, that trusting in your mercy we may delight in your saving will, where the last are made first by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
And now if you brought an offering this morning, we have time for you to present that. The plate is on the stand by the entrance doors. And during this time, we'll hear the offertory played by Dr. Elena Garina. mercy on 
you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also, Jesus took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament. Shed for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
May this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. This true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. True body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this wonderful healing gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.